some stuff. Oh, you boys have done well, haven't you? And I flogged a huge bottle of gin for you, too. Oh! Family-friendly horror has always been one of my most cherished subgenres. Whether it's classic 90s TV shows like Goosebumps and Are You Afraid of the Dark, or movies ranging from Little Monsters to Paranorman. And it seems kids of all generations just can't resist a peek behind the curtain into the world of the macabre. And what perhaps most separates the adult tales of terror from something like, say, The Little Vampire is the awe and wonder interwoven amongst the scares, reframing the world of monsters and magic as something to be explored rather than feared. However, several of these gems of film and television have been somewhat lost to time, one of which has stood out to me as the height of what the kids horror genre has to offer, although for the majority of the world, it would go straight to video. Starring one of classic TV's most familiar faces, it's a film that wears its heart on its sleeve while also delivering the kind of family fright you can really sink your teeth into. I didn't quite know when I should start up again. Punch me, Lonnie! Please, punch me before I start to scream! The children's audio play Moonrise premiered on Radio New Zealand in October 1986, offering up some light-hearted scares just in time for the Halloween season. Airing in five 12-minute long episodes, the play follows two young boys' moonlit adventures with their magical undead uncle, and its author, filmmaker and screenwriter Michael Heath, also saw it as a chance to adapt one of his own works into a feature film. Heath already came with a background in the horror-thriller genre, and to develop the project, the writer partnered with his previous collaborator, director David Blythe. A trailblazer in Kiwi horror, Blythe was then most known for the 1984 zombie splatter film Death Warmed Up and was looking to make the switch to more family-friendly entertainment when he was approached by Heath. Blythe was immediately taken by the script, feeling that it not only cleverly turned the vampire myth on its head, but also encapsulated the wonder and imagination of childhood, in addition to its rebelliousness. An inspiring vampire movie, if you will. And the pair charged forward to secure financing. However, before I go any further, we need to talk about the title. While I've used the name My Grandpa is a Vampire for this video, this is only because it was the U.S. moniker assigned by the marketing department behind its home video release. And while the film was also marketed as Grampire in Canada, the official given title as it appeared in New Zealand is Moonrise. And for the sake of brevity, I will continue to refer to it as such. Did I frighten you, did uh, I? Yeah, you did. Uh... We didn't expect you to start talking again, actually. Oh. While the film and the radio play more or less follow the same premise, there are some key differences, most of which being the result of Heath and Blythe retooling the story to be geared more toward an American audience. Oh, man. You Kiwis are real fruitcakes. I'm not. Perhaps the most notable difference is that Vernon Cougar is written as Lonnie's uncle, not grandfather, who speaks in the King's English rather than a broad New York accent. Don't let the vampire bite. <laughs> this seemingly arbitrary change would no doubt be the direct result of the character's casting, and there was only ever one name that Heath and Blythe had in mind to headline the film.
In the years following the Munsters, Al Lewis famously owned and operated the Manhattan Italian restaurant, Grandpa's Belegente. And unlike his co-stars, he continued to fully embrace the role of Grandpa Munster for the remainder of his life. With the help of an American casting director, the filmmakers tracked down the then 67-year-old actor and sent him an early draft of the script, after which an ecstatic Lewis didn't hesitate to sign on. Lewis felt that his Grandpa Munster alter ego would not only help market the film, but he and his wife Karen Lewis saw visiting New Zealand to be an irresistible once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. As Grandpa Cougar, Lewis employs his showman-like enthusiasm to great effect, and is undoubtedly the highlight of the film, clearly having a good time in the role. But despite Lewis's delightfully vaudevillian approach, the iconic actor's expressive face can be genuinely unsettling in certain shots, Blythe and director of photography Kevin Hayward using classic horror movie lighting to accentuate his aged features. And I imagine that by today's standards, the film would be considered too frightening for younger children. While the fangs were obviously fake, unprompted by the filmmakers, Lewis grew his own nails out in preparation for the role. According to everyone involved, Lewis was nothing but a pleasure to work with. A famous storyteller and avid cigar smoker, he frequently entertained the cast and crew with tales from his days in old New York, his relationship with the mob, and his extensive acting career, and was never shy about advertising his New York restaurant. Lewis also loved children, and formed a close bond with his two young co-stars. Al Lewis's casting would lend their little project major credibility, and Blythe wasted no time in casting the remaining parts. The late child actor Justin Gawkey won the role of Lonnie, who was rewritten as an American boy visiting his grandpa. At the time, Gawkey was fresh off of the hit drama series Santa Barbara, where he took home a daytime Emmy for his performance as Brandon Capwell. However, despite his early career success, Moonrise would mark Gaki's final acting credit before his retirement from the industry. Up-and-coming actor and future musician Milan Boric would be cast as Lonnie's best friend, Kanziora, a name that Aunt Leah in the radio show compares to an exotic stew. Gaki and Boric do a fine job anchoring the film for younger viewers, both characters really being vessels through which the audience experiences the wonders of Grandpa Cougar. That being said, there is one scene set at Cougar's wake where a drunk woman starts coming on to our clearly underage protagonists. And while as a kid I thought nothing of it, now the scene is very uncomfortable to watch. To play the lovable, if slightly mysterious, Aunt Leah, the producers turned to the renowned film and television actor Dame Pat Evison, wanting an equally beloved New Zealand native to match American star Al Lewis's casting. However, despite playing Cougar's daughter, Evison was actually just one year younger than Lewis, who often took on much older roles. Evison is, of course, excellent in the role, and like Lewis, she lights up the screen with a playful portrayal, which would be her final on-screen performance. Character actor Noel Appleby took on the part of Aunt Leah's boyfriend turned relentless vampire hunter, Ernie Node. Appleby going on to be best known to global audiences as Evervard Proudfoot in Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings. As the film's primary antagonist, Ernie isn't much of a threat, but this is beside the point and Appleby certainly leans into the character's foolish tendencies. The film also features a strong supporting cast of familiar faces, including Ian Watkin as the creepy father Vincent, who horror fans may recognize as Uncle Les from Peter Jackson's Dead Alive. And David Weatherly plays the somewhat inept and oddly named Sergeant Dickie Ticker, Weatherly also going on to appear in Lord of the Rings. Both Watkin and Weatherly had also previously appeared in director David Blythe's Death Warmed Up. Filmed in just five weeks in coastal Auckland, mostly along scenic Piha Beach, Auckland's historic Alberton House would double for Aunt Leah's elaborate home, 
although the majority of interiors would be filmed in studio. Man, anything's possible and a real McDonald's would be used for the famous scene where the boys take a thirsty grandpa cougar for a quick drink, David Blythe having struck a deal with the local franchise owner. Mr. McDonald's, here we go! The Americanization of Moonrise would result in securing a major US investor, and the film was originally envisioned to be a much larger production. Unfortunately, just before principal photography was set to begin, the project would suffer a devastating financial blow after complications arose following the execution of Operation Desert Storm, which ultimately resulted in the US backer dropping out. This unwelcomed turn of events forced the filmmakers to totally recalibrate and reimagine the film on a much smaller scale. Playing down its more fantastical elements and building up the comedy and character focused scenes. What's more, the entire cast and crew would have to consent to hefty pay cuts. Bite your ass. Consequently, the film has minimal special effects sequences, with the flying scenes accomplished by having the actors simply stand on an adjustable ramp. While Michael Heath's original script showcased much more elaborate demonstrations of Cougar's magical abilities, I do feel this is to the film's benefit, as it allows more room for the imagination to take hold, which is a large part of its lasting appeal. Seasoned Kiwi cinematographer Kevin Hayward would serve as director of photography, and his rich and colorful lighting and mystical atmosphere certainly elevates the film. In fact, Hayward earned the onset nickname of Dark Prince for his use of a dark but vibrant color palette adding a touch of the gothic to juxtapose the otherwise lush green backdrop. Blythe and Hayward also take full advantage of Auckland's West Black Sand coastline, and the on-location shooting lends the film a layer of reality that counterbalances its dreamier sequences. Future Oscar winners Kim Sinclair and Neela Dixon would oversee the production and costume design, respectively, and in conjunction with Hayward's cinematography, Sequences such as the opening funhouse ride and Grandpa's moonlit farewell make the film visually engaging and memorable. For the film's equally memorable music, Blythe turned to his then most recent collaborator, Australian composer Jim Manzi, who had scored Blythe's other vampire film, 1990's Red-Blooded American Girl. Manzi also partnering with Pat Reagan to complete the score. Manzi delivers what are at times routine 90s family comedy motifs, a product of the era, but at other moments offers up a truly eerie score, which enhances the creepy sound mixing. You remember? Mozart! Huh? Of course, the film's most notable piece of music wasn't composed by either Manzi or Reagan, the film thrice featuring a piece from Grandpa's favorite opera, Mozart's The Magic Flute, also one of writer Michael Heath's personal favorites. While Moonrise would have a theatrical run, it was mostly limited to the festival circuit, showing at over 30 international venues and later hit New Zealand cinemas in 1991. They are distributed by Endeavor Productions. Unfortunately, the film only ran for two weeks before being pulled due to its poor box office performance and mixed critical reception, and would not become available in its country of origin for another three decades. Following its brief stint in cinemas, the film premiered in the US in June 1992 at the Los Angeles International Film Festival also becoming the opening film of the 1992 London Children's Film Festival, with an in-person introduction by Al Lewis, and competed at several other festivals around the globe. In one instance, however, just ahead of a Moscow-based festival, reels of the film were stolen by Russian bootleggers and later turned into a black market VHS tape. We fell out of the sky. Starring Al Lewis of The Munsters. Sleep tight. Don't let the vampire bite. <laughs> My grandpa is a vampire.
It would make its official North American home video premiere in 1992 from distributor Republic Pictures in the US and Astral Video in Canada, and would go on to see a global home video rollout, reaching an even broader audience in 1997 with its television debut. However, for the next 25 years, the film of many names would go mostly unseen and would become harder and harder to come by as its limited VHS copies succumb to the ravages of time. And while it may have missed the age of DVDs, it would make a glorious return in high definition. The picture. In fall 2022, a region-free Blu-ray from cult film distributor Severin Films hit the collector's market under the US title, My Grandpa is a Vampire offering an all-new audio commentary from director David Blythe and writer Michael Heath, exclusive interviews, and Heath's full original radio play, in addition to a behind-the-scenes booklet from writer and producer John Campapiano. The film is also presented in its original 1851 aspect ratio for the first time. For any fans of the film, I highly recommend picking this up. The care put into it is obvious, and it was great revisiting a film that I had last watched on videotape. See you later, mesh potato. In a little while, crocodile. I think the reason both kids and adults are drawn to horror is because we all want to believe that there is more to life, and that adrenaline we get when we're afraid is a reminder that not all is as it seems. And while some find that unsettling, others seem to be drawn in even further. And whether you call it Moonrise, Grandpire, or My Grandpa is a Vampire, the film stands as a peak example of what the family-friendly horror genre can achieve. A colorful wonderland of flights and frights that has once again risen from the grave to sweep away a whole new generation. So, let me know your thoughts on Moonrise. Was it a childhood favorite or just something you've never heard of? And would you be interested in a modern day reimagining? And as always everyone, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, go ahead and click like below and feel free to share. And don't forget to find me on Patreon at forward slash Leighton Eversol. And of course, if you want to see more videos just like this one, go ahead and click subscribe. For my red oak wood It's a very sore I don't know what to do